this video we're going to be looking at quartiles. Let's imagine that this bar here represents data. For example, it could represent the heights of adult males in the United Kingdom. So if we put those people in order, every adult male in the United Kingdom, right down here on the far left hand side we'd have the shortest person in the whole country and then the height would increase and increase and increase until you get all the way to this end where you get the tallest person in the country. Now when we do maths what we like to do is take all of this data and split it into four equal sections. So we can look at the smallest person and the tallest person but also this person here will be quite interesting. They would be exactly 25% one quarter of the way through the data. And then this next person here, this will be the person right in the middle, so 50% or halfway through the data. And then this person here would be 75% of the way through the data. Now it just so happens that these figures already exist, so I've looked this up, and this here, this would be the person who is on the absolute far left hand side. His name is Michael Henbury, and he is 86 centimeters tall. And up at the far end, the tallest person in the United Kingdom, this guy here, Neil Fingleton, who is 233 centimeters tall which puts him at seven foot seven inches this guy is an absolute giant and poor Michael down here he's only 86 centimeters tall um, now this point here 25 percent of the way through the data that happens to be 173 centimeters tall for males in the United Kingdom right in the middle of all of the data is 177 centimeters and this one here which is three quarters of the way through the data or you could think of it as a quarter of the way from the top end is 181 centimeters so this is what the data looks like for the heights of males in the UK now it happens that these points here that I've marked on have special names so this one down here that's obviously the minimum and this one here has a name which is called the lower quartile and the word quartile comes from the word quarter because we split it into four sections you then get the middle which you might call the middle quartile or the second quartile perhaps but we actually have a name for the middle piece of data that you've probably met already which is the median and then this one here just like we've got the lower quartile we've got the upper quartile because it's a quarter from the top and then at the far end we have the maximum value okay now that we've met these terms let's look at what you might have to do in an exam situation here we're asked to find the minimum value lower quartile median upper quartile and maximum value now, unlike the situation that we just looked at with the height with Michael and Neil, uh, these numbers are not already in order. So the first thing you need to do is put those numbers in order. So we've got one at the bottom, and then we've got a two, we've got a three, we've actually got a second three, we've got two sixes, and the highest value is a seven. So the minimum value is quite easy to find. It's the one down this end, it's a one, and similarly the maximum value is the seven. And then we come to find the median and the upper and lower quartile. Now, the best way to do this is to take a pen and cross off values from each end. So you cross off the smallest value and the largest value, and these get crossed off as a pair. And you cross off the next smallest value and pair that up with the next largest value, and then the same again, and you'll be left with the middle number, which must be the median. So that is three. And if we do it again, we've got one, two, three, three, six, six, and seven. But now we're not after the middle number. Let's go for the lower quartile. So if I change to green pen. So if I ignore the median and imagine it's not there for a second, this is my lower half of the data. I've got one, two, and three. And in the middle of my lower half of the data, I've got a two. If I do the same with the top half, this is my top half of data because it's everything above the median. If I cross off this 6 and this 7, I'm left with a 6. This means that the lower quartile is a 2 and the upper quartile is a 6. 
Now, when we just did this with these numbers, you will have noticed that the median happened to be in the 1, 2, 3, 4th position here. The lower quartile here was 2, that was the second number in the list. And the upper quartile here was this 6, that was the 6th number in the list. Now, that was quite easy to do because our list was quite small. We didn't have very many numbers. We had seven, so we could cross them off quite easily. But if you had a giant list of numbers, there needs to be a more efficient way of doing it. It just so happens there is. When you find the lower quartile, which on the right is LQ, you use the following formula, which is N plus 1 divided by 4, where N here is the number of bits of data you've got. So we had seven bits of data, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 plus 1 divided by 4, well that's 7 plus 1, that's 8, divide that by 4, that's 2. That meant we wanted the second value in the list, which is why it was this one here, which was the 2. The median is the n plus 1, but not divided by 4 this time, because we want halfway through the data, we go for divide by 2. So n is 7, because there's 7 bits of data, 7 plus 1, divide it by 2, that's 8 divided by 2, which is 4. So we want the fourth bit of data, that doesn't mean the answer is a 4, it means we want the first, second, third, fourth bit of data in order, which is a 3. And for the upper quartile, you want 3 lots of n plus 1 divided by 4. And in this case, that was 3 lots of, well, n is 7 plus 1 divided by 4 and we knew that 7 plus 1 divided by 4 was 2 because we did that earlier so it's 3 lots of 2 which is the 6th value in the list which is why we ended up with this value and that's important to consider when you're doing exams these formulas here are incredibly useful so I would jot those down Okay, let's look at a different example and use those formulas. This time we don't have seven, we have lots of data. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 bits of data. So n equals 15. So what I'm going to do is use my formulas. I've got 15 plus 1 over 4, that's 16 over 4, which is 4. So my lower quartile is my fourth bit of data. My median is going to be 15 plus 1 over 2. 15 plus 1 is 16. Divide that by 2. I want the eighth bit of data. And the upper quartile, that's 15 plus 1 over 2. I want three lots of that. Sorry, not over 2, over 4. 15 plus 1 is 16. Over 4 is 4. Times that by 3, and I get 12. So I want the twelfth bit of data. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in order. Um, let's start with some low values. I've got a 3 here, and I've got another 3 here. So I've got a 3 and a 3. Um, I can see quite a few 8s. I've got 1 8, 2 8s, 3 8s. And this is absolutely the best way to do a question like this, is to cross the numbers off as you go. So I've got 1 8, 2 8s, Creates. To make sure you don't make a mistake, it's very easy to do um, in a tedious question like this. I've got one nine, two nines, and now we're on to double digit numbers. I've got one thirteen, and then one two, three, three fourteens. So that was a thirteen, a fourteen, another fourteen, and a final fourteen. And then I've got a 15, an 18, a 19, and then the final number 22. And at this point, I would just count your numbers just to make sure you've got 15 as you expected. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 numbers. Excellent. So, Rather than doing that method that we did last time of crossing off the numbers, we can simply count through, and when we hit the fourth number, that must be the lower quartile, the eighth number, that must be the median, and the twelfth number, that's the upper quartile. So the minimum value is 3, we can see that really obviously, and the maximum value is 22. That's obvious now they're in order. So we've got 1, 2, 3, fourth number, 8 here. That must be my lower quartile because it's the fourth number. So I'm after the eighth number now fifth number, sixth number, seventh number, eighth number, thirteen, 
so that's my median. And then the lower quartile is the 12th number, 9th, 10th, 11th, and my 12th number here is 15, which completes the question, that's my upper quartile. So I have 3, 8, 13, 15, and 22. Okay, here are three questions for you to have a go at. If you press pause and have a go at these, drop them down on some paper, and then press play again, I'll take you through the answers to them. Okay, here are the answers to these questions. For the first question, you should have got a one for the minimum. Fortunately, these were in order for you already. Then a five, then the median is 15, and then 23 and 29. And for the next question, this one you have to put in order. The minimum was 15. Then you have 24 for a lower quartile. Then 28, 31, and 34. And for the final question, the minimum value is 0. Then lower quartile, 3. Median, 14 upper quartile 18 and finally the maximum value 21 okay there's only one more thing you need to be able to do now when we have this data like we had earlier and it's split up into these four sections with the lower quartile being here the median here and the upper quartile here there's two other values that we can talk about one of those is the range the range is the distance from here all the way to here and it's calculated by doing the largest value take away the smallest value however there's another sort of range which goes from here the lower quartile to here the upper quartile and this range is calculated by doing the upper quartile take away the lower quartile and it's got a special name it's called the interquartile range and we use IQR for short whereas this is just range so let's have a look at how you calculate these for a question like we just did. Here's a set of numbers. Calculate the range and interquartile range. So we put them in order like before. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, and 11. And the range would be the largest value, 11. Take away the smallest value, 1. And that comes out as 10. But the interquartile range is the upper quartile subtract the lower quartile. Now the upper quartile for this question would come out as 8 and the lower quartile would come out as 2. So it's 8 take away 2 which is 6. So our range is 10 and our interquartile range is 6. Okay, here are three questions. I'd like you to try and work out what the range and interquartile range are for these. Again, press pause, have a go at this on some paper, and then press play, and I'll take you through the answers so you can see if you got them right. Okay, here are the answers to these. For the first one, the range uh, is equal to the largest takeaway, the, the smallest, which is 29, subtract 1 which equals 28 and the interquartile range is the upper quartile which is 23 subtract 5 which is 18 the next one the range is the largest takeaway smallest again so 34 subtract 15 which is 19 the interquartile range equals 31 subtract 25 because these are the upper and lower quartiles and that gives you 6. And for the final question the range is 21 take 0 because that's the largest and smallest that gives you 21 and the interquartile range is upper quartile which is 15 subtract lower quartile which is 3 this gives you 12. And that concludes this video on calculating with quartiles.